Welcome to Never a Truer Word, where we look at the words that people choose to use to see if they're telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and look to upskill you as well in spotting deception when people speak. If you're a regular here, you'll know we don't do politics very much, but we got a couple of potential sleazies going on. Eric Adams, Mark Robinson. Mark Robinson, he's been accused of making some really weird online comments years ago, I think, before he was a politician, and he's denying that. And Eric Adams, well, he's the mayor of New York, and he's been charged with bribery and fraud. He's denying that too. Have you seen these guys talk? What does your gut instinct say about what they're saying? Well, let's guide you through it and see if we can understand, looking at the words, whether they're being truthful, whether they're being reliable with their denials, or whether actually they are having one over on you. And these guys are indeed a little bit sleazy. Look, politics, they use deceptive and manipulative language all the time. The sort of language that we look at on this channel. It's really easy to spot. So let me guide you through it as we go. We're going to start with Mark Robinson talking about these online comments. And did he leave them? Uh, do you deny that this account is you? Well, first off, let me say thank you so much for allowing me to come here and clear the air. We absolutely do. do. This is not us. These are not our words. And this is not anything that is characteristic of me, nor has it ever ha has it ever been. Uh, the people here of North Carolina know I have been completely transparent about uh, my history. All the warts, we, we put them all out. We let folks know about it. Uh, but the folks here also know my character. They know uh, who I am. They know my voice, so to speak. And this is not my voice. This is not things that we would ever say or even think. And so absolutely we do. If that's the first time that you've heard this, what's your gut instinct saying? He's asked, do you deny that this account is you? Do you deny that this account is you? This is a yes or no question. So this, the answer to this, it should be the yes, no show. It should be, yes, I do deny that, or, or no, I don't deny that, it was me. Now, I don't think we're going to get the no there. I think what he wants us to hear is, yes, I deny that that is me. But he doesn't say yes anywhere. Let's see what he does say. First of all, he doesn't deal with the question at all. He does some nice political schmoozing at the top. Well, first off, let me say thank you so much for allowing me to come here and clear the air. And that's an interesting phrase, isn't it? Clear the air. It's not clear up what's going on. Now, clear the air is something we use when someone's fallen out, isn't it? Or when there's been a misunderstanding between two people, we say, hey, let's clear the air. And that's the phrase he uses there. It's not clear up what has happened. It's not clear up and get to the truth. He just wants to clear the air, i.e. He wants to get rid of all the smog that's around. That's what he wants to do. He's up saying that in his own words. He then says, we absolutely do, uh, do. Now, is that in uh, connection to the question, do you deny this account is you? We absolutely do. And it's the word absolutely. I flag this all the time. Whenever you hear the word absolutely, especially when it's like a synonym for yes, uh, then dig into the rest of the words going on because it is potential deception happening. I'm not saying every time someone says absolutely, there's a lie happening. What I am saying is every time you hear absolutely, then be on guard for potential deception. And this is He's helping us here. He's raising a red flag all by himself. Instead of saying, yes, I deny it, he's saying, we absolutely do. And what strange wording. He talks about we all the time. He doesn't talk for himself. We absolutely do. This is not us. These are not our words. Who is he talking about here? The allegation is that he did this. Mark Robinson did this. And he says, we absolutely do. This is not us. These are not our words. Why is he talking about this group of people and not talking about himself. He says, this is not anything that is characteristic of me. Now that, look, that looks so solid. Hey, this, you know, this is not me, but that's not what it says. This is not anything that is characteristic of me. In other words, if he did do that, if he did leave these comments online and they're pretty off color, maybe it was just something that was out of character, yeah? Or out of the character that he wants to portray now. What he hasn't done is say, it's not me. He just says, this is not anything that is characteristic of me. And we've all done things in the past that are not characteristic of ourselves. We've all got mad sometimes when we think, why did I get mad? We've all shouted at someone when we never raise our voice. Or we've gone really quiet when we're normally confrontational. We all do things that are not characteristic of ourselves. So saying this is not something that is characteristic of me is not a 
denial. So he's asked the question, do you deny that this account is you? The account that was posting all these weird things on adult sites. Do you deny that this account is you? And in summary, he doesn't give a yes. He does deny it. And there is no denial. Just lots of words, but none of those add up to a denial. He goes on and says, uh, the people here of North Carolina know I have been completely transparent about uh, my history. We've got the word completely in there. He could have just said, and it would have had the same meaning, I have been transparent about my history. But he has this need to persuade us that he has been transparent about his history by adding the word completely in there. So again, has he been transparent? Why does he feel the need to use extra language to persuade us what has happened? He's obviously very sensitive. He obviously really wants to convince us that he has been transparent. So potentially, potentially, he has not been transparent and he feels like he has to say he's been completely transparent just to shut down any questions there. He appeals to the masses here. He says, the people here of North Carolina know and the folks here know my character. So he's going there to social proof, yeah? So social proof is when you do the, lots of people know about me, lots, you know, it's, you're the one person who's got questions about me, but the people here in North Carolina, the folks here, they know who I am. But also, again, this is not a denial. This is only saying people know who I am. They could even know that you're a bad guy, that you are a sleaze, that you are the sort of person that leaves really awful comments online because that's all it says is people here know my character and know I have been transparent. These people know my voice, so to speak. This is not my voice. Now, that is really qualified. Uh, you, know, you know, this is not my voice. Again, what this is saying to me is not, this is not, I did not leave these comments online, which he hasn't said once yet. He's wording it all very strangely. This is not my voice. What? What, again, is this this sort of, it's out of character, it's not my character, it's not my voice. They know my voice, so to speak, and this is not my voice. At least he's finally owning this. He's not talking about we. Oh, yes, he is, because he then goes on to say, this is not things that we would ever do or even think. And so, absolutely, we do. So he's talking about this we again. So who is this we and why can't he talk for himself? Because the allegations are only about him, not about all the people in his team or all the people in his family or, or whoever he means by this we. But all he said here is, this is not my voice. That is not the same thing as I did not put those comments online, which would be very, very easy to say. And yet he doesn't say it. And he finishes off with an absolutely as well. So if we didn't have a red flag when he started by saying, I absolutely do, then once again, he absolutely, we do. But again, he doesn't join that to a denial. He doesn't say, I absolutely deny this. He just says, I absolutely do. And if someone doesn't say the full thing, don't assume they mean all of it. Don't assume that following that, absolutely, he really means to say, I absolutely deny this because he doesn't do that. Don't give him the grace of adding in words when he hasn't said them. In all of that, in that first part, do you deny the, the accusations here? There is no denial at all that this account was him. Do you want to some more from Mark Robinson? How can you deny with all of these matching details that this is you? Look, I'm not going to get into the minutia of how somebody manufactured this, uh, these salacious tabloid lies, but I can tell you this, there's been over $1 million spent on me through AI by a billionaire son who's bound and determined to destroy me. The things that people can do with the internet now is incredible, but what I can tell you is this, again, these are not my words, this is simply tabloid trash being used as a distraction from the substantive issues that the people of this state are facing. We have addressed it. We have said it's not true. And we wish we could move on and get busy with the uh, business of the people of the state. OK, well, these posts, they do take place over a five year period from 2008 to 2013. You, you mentioned AI. Are you saying that somebody was somehow manufacturing biographical details to exactly match you using your username? Look, I have no idea how this was done. I have absolutely no how, idea how it was done. And I have five weeks left in this campaign. Uh, to focus on the substantive issues that North Carolinians face. I do not have time for tabloid trash. Wow. 
So he's asked the question once again, how can you deny with all of these matching details that this is you? And he starts by saying, look, I'm not going to get into the minutiae of how somebody manufactured this. These salacious tabloid lies, but I can tell you this. There's been over $1 million spent on me through AI by a billionaire's son who's bound and determined to destroy me. Now that may seem like, whoa, a hell of an allegation. I ain't going to go into how this happens, but a billionaire's son has spent a million dollars doing it. That may sound like a huge allegation, a huge rebuttal, but in fact, it's hot air. It's like a balloon. You look at it and it looks solid, but as soon as you inspect it, it's really a bit of flimsy and it's full of hot air. What hot air is there? Well, look, he says, I'm not going to get into the minutiae of how somebody manufactured this. Well, why not? You're facing really serious allegations. You're running a political campaign right now. Why don't you want to get into the minutiae of how this happens? And then he throws out this line. There's been over $1 million spent on me through AI by a billionaire's son who's bound and determined to destroy me. Now, that is really, really weird. It doesn't say that directly that this billionaire's son did this, posted these comments online all these years ago at all. He just throws this out there. He doesn't connect that action that he claims has happened with these comments online. It is all just hot air. Also note that the way that's worded, it doesn't flow if you read it. There's been over $1 million spent on me, so spent on him, through AI, the money's been spent through AI. It just doesn't add up by a billionaire son who's bound and determined to destroy me. That could have been said much, much simpler. Some billionaire son has spent over a billion, a million dollars on AI to try and destroy me, right? That, that would flow. When we don't have the authentic experience, then it's much harder to word it. And we get sentences like that really weird one. There's been over $1 million spent on me through AI by a billionaire son who's bound and determined to destroy me. He went on to say, the things that people can do on the internet now is incredible. Again, the things that people can do on, with the internet now is incredible. That's true. That is very true. The things that people can do on the internet is incredible. He doesn't say that's what happened in his case. He's just stating a general fact that's over there. It's got nothing to do with the allegations there. What I can tell you is, again, these are not my words. So we've got, again, these are not my words. It's not, I did not put these comments online. He never, ever says that once. It's just, these are not my words. And then he does a very, very classic politician move. He says, this is simply tabloid trash being used as a distraction from the substantive issues that the people of this state are facing. We have addressed it. We have said it's not true. We wish we could move on and get busy with the business of the people of the state. So if he was driving down a road and the interviewer has put him on a road where he's dealing with these accusations that he put really bad comments online all these years ago, he's now trying to take the off-ramp. Politician classic. I don't want to talk about this anymore, so I am going to move away. I'm going to take the off-ramp from this lane and I'm going to talk about the things that I want to talk about. You'll notice here that what he really wants to do is focus on the issues for the people of this state. So he's not doing it for himself. Oh no, he's doing it for other people. This is classic deception tactics. When someone is up against the ball, facing a hard time, they want to say how good they are. It's like a resume statement. So I want to focus on things that are important to the people of this state. I don't want to talk about this anymore. It's sensitive. It's, dis it's discomforting. I, it, it makes me annoyed to talk about this. I want to talk about something that I'm much more comfortable talking about, which is politics. And this is him trying to take the off ramp, trying to go and talk about what he wants to talk about rather than deal with these allegations. Now, why would that be. The interviewer says to him, okay, well, these posts, they do take place over a five-year period from 2008 to 2013. You mentioned AI. Are you saying that somebody was somehow manufacturing biographical details to exactly match you using your username? And he says, I have no idea how this was done. I have absolutely no idea how it was done. And I have five weeks left in this campaign uh, to focus on the substantive issues that North Carolinians face. I did not have, ta I did not have time for tabloid trash. So he says, I have no idea how this was done. I have absolutely no idea how this was done. One sentence, two sentences with big, big deceptive red flags in them. He says, I have no idea twice. I have no, absolutely no idea how it was done. Well, we've got the absolutely in there. So that's why you should dig in and look at what's there. Now, 
When someone doesn't know something, they tend to, not all the time, but they tend to say, I don't know. So if he'd said, I don't know how this was done, I'd be going, okay, he doesn't know how this was done. But when we say no idea, well, look, very often we do have ideas. He has said that he thinks it may well have been AI, this billionaire's son. Um, so when, very often we have ideas. So when someone says, I have no idea, they're really closing it down, but they do have ideas. And give us some of those ideas, share those ideas. Because remember, at the beginning of this answer, he said, I'm not going to get into the minutiae of how somebody manufactured this. So that's very much him saying that I could get into the minutiae of how somebody manufactured this. I know how it was done, but I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to get into it at the moment. He did say that he was aware in his words of the minutiae of how somebody manufactured this. And now he's saying, I have no idea how this was done. Now that's deception indicated from Mark Robinson. And here, did you spot it? I have no idea how it was done and I have five weeks left in this campaign uh, to focus on the substantive issues. He's tried to take the off-ramp once more. He doesn't like being penned down and being brought back to these allegations and so he's hitting the off-ramp. Let's have some more from Mark Robinson uh, and this is him talking about how he does not like the CNN investigation into what he did. You've talked about the, the reporting being salacious lies, not true. Have you taken steps then to prove we, it's not you? We absolutely are. We absolutely are. We're, 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 we're in talks right now, everything up to legal counsel to take CNN to task for what they have done to us. We are, we are going after them, okay? We are going to go after them for what they've done. But we have five weeks left in this race, folks, and make no mistake about it. We are not gonna let CNN throw us off of our mission. Our mission is to win this race. And quite frankly, I am dismayed about the fact, as I said before, think about how many people out there right now, right in this place where we are right now, who are hooked on fentanyl who are hooked on, uh, right. on opioids and how many will die tonight because of it? I think you may be ahead of me in some of the things I'm going to say there because it was a classic, classic politician deceptive dodge. You've talked about the reporting being salacious lies, not true. Have you taken steps to prove it's not? And he interrupts and says, we absolutely are. We absolutely are. So he is so desperate to get his clothes down and for him to have his say rather than for these lies to be talked about anymore, that he interrupts. He's ready for what is about to happen and he's ready to say it. And yeah, once again, we absolutely are. We absolutely are. So we've got the word absolutely there twice. So has he taken steps to prove it's not true? Well, absolutely and absolutely. I got red flags for deception there. He's asked, have you taken steps to prove it's not true? Have you taken steps to prove it's not true? Uh, so the question is put to you, to Mark Robinson. And his answer comes back once more in this group sense, because he talks about we and us. We absolutely are. We absolutely are. We, we are, we're in talks right now. We're going to take CNN to task for what they have done to us. We are going after them, okay? We are going to go after them for what they've done. So he cannot talk for some reason to himself um, and answer the question for himself. I feel like he is dodging talking about anything personally. And, and what's he doing? What is he doing um, that he says, we absolutely are taking steps. Well, what? Break down what he says. He says, we're in talks. Well, that just means you're in talks. You're, you, that is not actually taking steps. We're in talks. So nothing much has happened. We're in talks about them. Uh, everything up to legal counsel. Well, what does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. It, what is everything up to legal counsel? Is there a ladder from um, the man on the street through to legal counsel? Mm. And what's he going to do? They're going to take CNN to task. Now, look. If he thinks CNN have lied about him, then that's libel or slander, but he doesn't mention that whatsoever. Just going to take them to task. That's kind of like just tick them off a bit for what they have done to us. Again, he doesn't say tell lies about us or libel us or slander us or, or even me, libel, slander me. What they have done to us is what he says. We are going after them, okay? Well, what does that mean? Going after them? It's just not there, is it? It's, what really does that mean? We're going after them and we are going to go after them for what they have done. If you break that down, it's a big lot of nothing we're in talks with everything, whatever that means, up to legal counsel, and we're going to take them to task for what they have done. It's not much at all. Uh, now, look, I raised the the red flag of absolutely. I, I, this, 
are they actually doing anything? And he contradicts himself when this answer, he says, we are going after them. So that would be in the present time, right now, we are going after them. And the very next thing he says is, we are going to go after them. So that's in the future. So which one is it? Are you doing it right now or are you doing it in the future? I do not think he has taken any steps to take on CNN there. His language around it is so deceptive. What has he done? What steps have he taken? What has CNN done to him? Can you tell me from that answer? And if you can't, why not? And then I think you may have spotted it. But we have five weeks left in this race, folks. And make no mistake about it, we're not going to let CNN throw us off our mission. And then he talks about uh, how many people here right now are hooked on fentanyl, who are hooked on uh, opioids. How many will die tonight because of it? Yes, he has taken the off-ramp there, hasn't he? He's gone from the thing that he doesn't want to talk about, these rumours that he put some really stupid stuff online. And he's taken the off-ramp there to talk about his big mission, to talk about the politics, to talk about the things that he's doing for other people. Really, this started with a question about what are you doing? Are you taking on CNN? And he's ended up with people dying. In fact, the implication of what he's saying is, look, if you don't take me seriously, if you don't talk about the campaign rather than these lies, people are dying. Uh, and that's really manipulative language there. What an off-ramp that one is. So that is Mark Robinson. So look, I don't think the guy's a great liar. I think he's very deceptive in his words. He's really low on substance, if you notice. He doesn't say much of any substance whatsoever. It may sound substantive when he talks, but when you actually break it down and look at the words, which is what we do on this channel, he says very little of substance. Some really strange wording there. That talking about us rather than I. Uh, the, the, the mysterious billionaire son who popped up who appears to have done absolutely nothing to him because he cannot tell us what happened. And in everything there, there was no solid denial. He did not say the words, these online comments were not written by me or these online comments were not posted by me. It was all, this is not my voice and you know, people know who I am and this is uh, not my character. So yeah, did he post those online comments? Would not surprise me if he did because his, his denial in word terms, is not strong, solid at all. Now, you've learned quite a lot about how politicians deceive and how politicians manipulate there. So let's go to the mayor of New York, Eric Adams. And this is him giving a statement before he's been charged. My fellow New Yorkers, it is now my belief that the federal government intends to charge me with crimes. If so, these charges will be entirely false based on lies, but they would not be surprising. I always knew that if I stood my ground for all of you, that I would be a target and a target I became. For months, leaks and rumors have been aimed at me in an attempt to undermine my credibility and paint me as guilty. Just this past week, they searched the home of our new police commissioner, looking for documents from 20 years ago, just one week after he joined my administration. Enough. Well, did you spot them there? Well, my fellow New Yorkers, it is now my belief that the federal government intends to charge me with crimes. If so, these charges will be entirely false. So that's the first bit I want to dwell on. These charges will be entirely false. Now, that's very subtly different from I'm innocent. Uh, I didn't do these things. It's the charges that are false. It's not him saying that his character is pure or his actions are pure. It's the charges that are false. It's the difference between being guilty in court and actually who actually factually did it. Um, and he seems to be parsing that very carefully there. Also, he says they are entirely false. So he has to, that need to persuade there, entirely false. It would mean the same thing if he said these charges will be false, but no, it's these charges will be entirely false. So there's a need for him to persuade us here that, that, that these charges are, are false. And also he talks about these charges. He doesn't expand on anything at all that he thinks at this point he is going to be charged with. But it's only the charges that will be entirely false and based on lies. Again, he's very, very subtle here, but he doesn't say and will be lies 
or are now full of lies or are lies is based on lies. So there's some real distance going on there. Um, and he's very, very qualified about how he talks about these charges. He makes a move very quickly here to say um, that I was doing this for you. If I stood my ground for all of you, I would be a target. I, I always knew that. So he's very quickly said, I was doing this for the greater good. I, you know, I, or I work for the greater good. I work for all of you. If I stood my ground for all of you, I would be a target. So once more, this is this sort of feeling of um, the reason that um, I'm getting all these, getting into all this trouble, is because I did things for you. And I find so many times in deception, especially around uh, public figures, is that when they say I wasn't doing it for myself, I was doing it for all of you. They are trying to get you on side because they are being deceptive. Again, for months, leaks and rumours have been aimed at me. Now, leaks and rumours, not necessarily false. True things can be leaked and rumours can be also true. And he doesn't disqualify them by saying false leaks, nasty rumours, vicious rumours, false rumours. He doesn't do any of that. And paint me as guilty. So once more, we've got this distance here that he's being painted as guilty. This last one is great. Just this past week, they searched the home of our new police commissioner looking for documents from 20 years ago, just one week after he joined my administration. This is very similar to Mark Robinson's billionaire son. It may be factual, but it does not mean that you have not committed fraud. It does not mean you have not bribed someone just because they went searching a home of a new police commissioner a week ago. It doesn't prove anything. Once more, we got hot air from a politician. It sounds like, wow, God, these guys have really got it in for him. But it doesn't mean that that he didn't commit bribery. It doesn't mean that he wasn't fraudulent in some way. It's just hot air. It looks really substantive, but when you actually get into it, it means absolutely nothing. We have seen a lot from politicians. Let's see some more from the mayor. I will fight these injustices with every ounce of my strength and my spirit. If I'm charged, I know I am innocent. I will request an immediate trial so the New Yorkers can hear the truth. New Yorkers know my story. They know where I come from. I have been fighting injustice my entire life. That fight has continued as your mayor. Despite our pleas, when the federal government did nothing as its broken immigration policies overloaded our shelter system with no relief, I put the people of New York before party and politics. Now, if I am charged, many may say I should resign because I cannot manage the city while fighting the case. I can also understand how everyday New Yorkers will be concerned that I cannot do my job while I face accusation. But I have been facing these lies for months since I began to speak out for all of you and their investigation started. Yet the city has continued to improve. Make no mistake, you elected me to lead this city and lead it, I will. I humbly ask for your prayers and your patience as we see this through. God bless you and God bless the city of New York. Again, I think you might be uh, in front of me here. I will fight these injustices with every ounce of my strength. So once more, he's not being specific. He's distancing himself from the accusations that he is facing. He just calls them these injustices. And then he says, if I'm charged, I know I am innocent. So he's qualifying it. He uh, doesn't just say, hey, I'm innocent. It's if I'm charged, I know I'm innocent. So he's only really in his words there, innocent if he is charged. Interesting. And he doesn't say, if I'm charged, I am innocent. Or even just a really simple, I am innocent. He says, I know I am innocent. Now, that's an interesting bit of distance to go from I am innocent to I know I am innocent. Now, think about something in your life where you did something that wasn't great and you justified it in some way. It could be that you ate an entire cake in one sitting and you went, I was hungry 
or I've had such a bad day, I deserve that. You qualify it out to yourself, you justify it to yourself. And I'm wondering here if I know I'm innocent leads to, look, I did some bad stuff, but I did it for the people in New York. I did it for the right reasons. Um, and that's therefore, I know I am innocent. I know I didn't do anything wrong, or I know I did it for the right reasons. I wonder if that's really where that form of wording is coming from, because he doesn't just say, I am innocent. He just says, I know I am innocent. He says, I will request an immediate trial so New Yorkers can hear the truth and hear a very similar to Mark Robinson, you know, almost the same playbook where he talked about the people in his area. New Yorkers can hear the truth and New Yorkers know my story. So again, he's pleading to all these people. He's using social proof. Look, New Yorkers, they know me. They know my story. They know where I come from. I've been fighting injustice my entire life. That fight has continued as your mayor. This is what we call a resume statement. Look, he could have been fighting injustice his entire life. He could have been doing that as the mayor. He could have come from the streets of wherever and pulled himself up to the very top of the city. That's his resume. It does not mean he didn't commit fraud. And it does not mean he didn't bribe someone. So why is he not talking about that? And why is he trying to say what a great guy he is? He then goes on to say, Despite our pleas, when the federal government did nothing as its broken immigration policies overloaded our shelter system with no relief, I put the people of New York before party and politics. Yes, he's hit the off-ramp here. He's fed up talking about these charges and these allegations. Not that he's talked about them in any depth at all, but he does not want to talk about them. He wants to talk about politics. He wants to talk about all the good things he's done. So he has hit the off-ramp there and started unloading on the federal government rather than himself. But again, he may well have done all of these things, but it does not mean he did not do the bad things too. He talks about, since I began to speak out for you all, so once more, this is him putting the people of New York out there and saying, hey guys, look at me, I've done all this for you, how could I possibly have done anything bad? And it's that thing that politicians do. They, they're not doing it for themselves, they're doing it for you. They've got your best interest at heart, therefore they're on your side, therefore they could not have done anything wrong. And that's Mayor Eric Adams before he was charged, but I do have a tweet here from him after he was charged. You have now heard the news about today's indictment. Let me be clear. I know I have done nothing wrong and I am committed to continuing to fight on behalf of New Yorkers as your mayor. From here, my attorneys will take care of the case so I can take care of this city. So you will have heard the news about today's indictment. Okay, let me be clear. I know I've done nothing wrong. No, I've done nothing wrong. It's I know. It's qualified again. I know I've done nothing wrong. Why aren't you saying you've done nothing wrong? Why not just say, let me be clear, I have done nothing wrong. This I know there lets me think that all sorts of things are going to come towards him and he's going to say, I didn't do anything wrong. You've got all this evidence that I did do something wrong, but I know I didn't do anything wrong. Or if I did do something wrong, I did it for the right reasons. Was there a bit of money going here and there? Well, I did it to fight for the people of New York. Look, he's committed to continuing to fight on behalf of New Yorkers as your mayor. So this again is, look, I can't be a bad guy. I can't have done things wrong because I am on your side. So there's Eric Adams. What do I take from him? Listen, no straightforward denial of the allegations there. They're all slightly qualified. They've all got that strange I know before them. And is he building his defence? Is he saying that these things were done because he's on the side of New Yorkers? And sometimes when you want to get things done, when federal government are doing the wrong things, you have to take a few shortcuts. That's what I think is possibly going on there with the mayor of New York and his charges. If you like this, then you can subscribe to get more episodes like this as soon as they drop, or you can become a member on YouTube or a subscriber on Spotify. You will get episodes like this before anyone else. Always interested in what it is that you have to say so you can get in touch in the comments or get in touch on social media. You'll find all the links in the show description. If you can't do any of that, just a simple like will help this get out to more people. I think more people should learn how to read politicians and know what's going on with politicians. Never a truer word .com. That is the website on there. You can sign up for the newsletter. You will find a whole load more videos, a load more podcasts. And as well, there's a couple of books if you want to really dig deeply into understanding the character of someone or whether they are deceiving you by looking at their words. And we'll see you for something new soon from Never a Truer Word.